attempt to describe what happens at the phase boundary and distillation. And we will always assume that there is an equilibrium. Big's phase rule states how many state variables are independent. So how many state variables you need to know, like temperature, pressure and so on, before you can calculate all the others from those. So things like enthalpy, for example. So Big's phase rule states that P plus N equals C plus 2, where P is the number of phases, N is the number of degrees of freedom, and C is the number of components. So if you have a pure substance at its boiling point, so you have two phases, a boiling liquid and a condensing gas, and one substance, how many degrees of freedom do you have? Try that yourself. Okay, so we had two phases and we had only one component. So then we only have one degree of freedom. So if we, for example, know the pressure, we also know at what temperature water boils. But what about a binary mixture? We will use binary mixtures all the time when we deal with distillation in this course. How many degrees of freedom do you have then, if you know that the system is boiling? Try that yourself. Okay, so the number of phases are still two, but now the number of components are two. So the number of degrees of freedom must also be two. So it's not enough to know the pressure to know the boiling point, you need to know something else. For example, the composition. So if you have ethanol water and you know the composition, how many mole percent of ethanol you have in the mixture, and you know the pressure, then you know what the boiling point is. So what is the boiling point? Well, perhaps you remember what the vapor pressure is. If you have a liquid like this one here, there's a bottle of water and there's liquid in here and there is gas inside here. So you can look at this as a two component system. You have water and you have water vapor and air there. If this is at equilibrium, then the partial pressure of water in this gas in here is the vapor pressure at that temperature. And the thing with vapor pressure is that it is highly temperature dependent. So it increases like this. And it can be described by Antoine's equation. So that is an important thing. Uh, two other important things are the Raoult's law and Dalton's law. Raoult's law is only valid for ideal solutions. And it states that uh, the partial pressure of a substance at equilibrium equals the molar fraction so if this would, would be ethanol and water inside in here, uh, if we know the molar fraction of water in here, we take that as Xa, and then we multiply that with the vapor pressure over pure substance, and then we get the vapor pressure, uh, the partial pressure of um, that substance in the gas. If it's ideal, water and ethanol isn't actually. And we will use the convention that the substance A is the most volatile and substance B is less volatile. And we will only use binary uh, solutions, binary mixtures. So Xa plus Xb is equals 1. And if we drop the index, so only write X, then we intend Xa, the most volatile. Dalton's law is kind of a variant of the ideal gas law. The ideal gas law states that all substances occupy equal space uh, per volume, uh, per, per mole. Uh, and so Pa equals the fraction of this substance in the gas, the molar fraction, times the total pressure. So the partial pressure of something is the molar fraction in the gas phase times the total pressure. Time for you to do something. Uh, if possible, try, try this with a friend. You should draw a PXY diagram 
for constant temperature for this system here. So you have a substance A whose vapor pressure over pure substance is 0 0.8 and you have substance B whose vapor pressure over pure substance is 0 0.3 and you should assume an ideal binary mixture so you can use Rolle's law straight up. So in this diagram here draw uh, partial pressure of A, partial pressure of B and total pressure as a function of molar fraction in the liquid. And once you've done that, try to calculate the molar fraction in the gas phase for at least one molar fraction in the liquid. Okay. So Raoult's law is linear, right? And if we have no A, then the partial pressure of A over this liquid, if it's boiling, must be zero. And if we have pure substance, then we must have 0 0.8. So it should be a straight line between those values. And the same for B, but it goes between 0 and 0 0.3 instead of 0 and 0 0.8 for, for A. And the total pressure is simply the sum of the two partial pressures. So that was quick and easy. And if you want to calculate the molar uh, fraction in the gas phase now, then you simply take one uh, partial pressure divided by the total, because that's Dalton's law. Now, we don't do distillation at constant temperature. We do it at constant pressure instead. And to calculate an XY diagram instead, we need to do iterations. There is actually one exercise uh, where you're supposed to iterate and find one point on this kind of diagram. In an XY diagram, we have lost the temperature axis. So the temperature decreases as we walk towards higher molar fractions of volatile component in the liquid. But not all mixtures are ideal. So how deal with that? Well, then we introduce an activity coefficient to multiply Rolle's law with. So instead of just Xa times the partial pressure over pure substance, we multiply that with an activity coefficient. And that activity coefficient actually varies with the concentration, with the composition in the liquid. There is a thermodynamic relation between um, activity coefficients uh, so that in a binary mixture either the activity coefficients are larger than one for both or they are less than one for both. If they're larger than one that's called a positive deviation and if there is smaller than one then that's called a negative deviation. At low concentration, there is a linear relation uh, between the partial pressure and uh, the, the composition. And that's called Henry's law. So the partial pressure over this mixture at low pressures, uh, sorry, low uh, uh, contents of this substance is Henry's constant times uh, times the composition, so Xa times Ha. And the only way to get to Henry's constant is to make measurements. But why are some mixtures not ideal, or rather most mixtures not ideal? Well, it depends on the force between the molecules. So if this is one molecule and this is another molecule, uh, the forces between this molecule and that molecule might be different but then between to two molecules of this kind, or indeed two molecules of that kind. So it's only if the forces between the molecules are the same, no matter which molecule it is, that we get an ideal solution. If we have a large deviation from ideality, then we might get an azeotrope. An azeotrope is a case where we have the same composition in the boiling liquid and the condensing gas. 
And if you have a large positive deviation, you get an azeotrope that is at boiling point minima, like this here. So at a certain composition, the temperature at which this solution boils is lower uh, at this uh, composition here than any other composition. And you can't pass an anisotropic point through distillation. So that's always an end point. You can't go past that. So to conclude, we have seen that for ideal binary mixtures, you can use Rolt's law and Dalton's law to calculate interconnected values of x, y, t, p, and so on. And we can then draw these as functions of each other, for example, in a px diagram or a tx diagram or x, y diagram and so on. And we could do this also for uh, non-ideal mixtures, but it's trickier and we won't do that in this course, uh, but it's still possible. And what we mainly will be using in this course is XY diagrams, and then we'll use McCabe-Teeler's graphical method to solve distillation problems.